Hi, uh, welcome everyone to AWM Feed Grad Seminar. Our next speaker is Signing Gong. She is a PhD student from Brown University. So her talk today uh, is on convergence of Lagrange FEM uh, for Maxwell eigenvalue problem in 3D. So uh, Signing Gong, you can proceed. Yeah, so I hope everyone can see my screen. Yes. Okay. So this is a joint work with my professor Johnny Guzman, uh, advisor Johnny Guzman, and um, uh, Daniela Bofi and Professor Michael Naylor from University of Pittsburgh. So this paper is still under review, but you can find the preprint on the at the archive. So uh, in 1873, Maxwell founded the modern theory of electromagnetism and he formulated that equations that now that bear his name Maxwell problems by means of empire and federal's laws and when we eliminate a magnetic factor field which is h here uh, so we will get the following continuous uh, continuous ag Maxwell eigenvalue problems and this is what we are interested in. So there, many people have worked on these problems. Uh, another a good reference would be the this survey paper by the, Professor Daniel Bofi, and you can find many uh, famous eigenvalue theories that are related to eigenvalue problems here. And we want to use the finite element method to solve these problems. So we firstly need to use the variational forms, which are also called weak formulations of the Maxwell eigenvalue equations. And we and here H0 curve means the function V and curve and V are both L in L2 space and their tangential component vanish on the boundary. The eta here is the eigenvalues we are interested in. So here, this space is a continuous space and infinite dimensional space. And when we apply finite element methods, we want to use a finite dimensional space. How to do that? Firstly, we triangulate our, so our domain omega into, so using triangles in 2D and here using the tetrahedron in 3D. Oh, sorry. Uh, wait. I'm sorry, I don't know if this is just me, but I don't see your slides. I only see the first slide. The, the, oh. The slides. oh, really? Sorry. Uh, maybe I... Uh, I don't know if other people see. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> uh, if, if, you need to click on share screen. There's a, uh, a green button. Click on it. Yeah, the uh, screen. Yeah, it's it's now working. Yeah. It I, should work, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, exactly. Now it's perfect. Okay, okay sorry, sorry for the Thank you. experience. Uh, okay, so back. Uh, so here this is the Maxwell problems, and this is the max uh, Maxwell eigenvalue problems that uh I just uh, talk about. So here the eta is the eigenvalue and uh, here is the survey paper that I just mentioned. Uh, okay, so this is the variational form and H0 curl space is uh, yeah the space that V and curl and V are both in L2 space and the tangential component vanish on the boundary. Here is the eta and we and we want to use finite element uh, methods to work on these problems. So we firstly triangulate the domain omega using the triangles in 2D and the tetrahedrons in 3D and apply piecewise polynomials with respect to those tetrahedrons or triangles and define the to define the finite dimensional space that we need. And the most simple finite element space, uh, space would be the Lagrange finite element space, which is the function is piecewise polynomials. 
and they are globally continuous, piecewise linear, linear, linears, and they are globally continuous. And after we define that VH, the finite dimensional space, and we could have the corresponding discrete model problems here. And UH is the eigenfunctions that we want, we, the, the approximation, the, the approximating mission of the eigenvalue function, eigenfunctions. And the eta H here is the approximation of eigenvalues. So if we use Lagrange finite elements on Maxwell eigenvalue problems, and if it's work, then everything, everyone would be happy. But unfortunately, this method does not work on generic mesh. So for here, so this is any, any random mesh, regular mesh here. And if we apply it, uh, apply P2, which is quadratic Lagrange finite element on generic mesh, then, this is the exact eigenvalue. This is the sixth non-zero eigenvalue of this problem. I use this as an example here. This is the exact eigenvalue of five. And our approximation shows 2.7, 2.7, and the error would be 2.24, which is really large. This is not good. And even if you refine the mesh, without any specific rules, you cannot improve the results. So this, which means this is not a good appro approximation. However, if we use the celebrated Nedlag edge elements came up by Nedlag uh, in 1980, the results would be very good. This is the lambda edge if we applied on generic mesh, the arrow, would be really good. And the Nedlag edge element is, so it is still piecewise polynomials in, uh, with respect to this triangulation. However, instead of globally continuous, they use, they only have tangential continuity across the internal ad, uh, faces. Here is faces. So in 2D, it should be internal edges. So, so instead of we have fully con continuity in Lagrange elements, here in Nedlag space, we only have tangential continuity. This is the difference. And for those who, who are not familiar with Nedlag elements, I showed the lowest order Nedlag at element space here in 3D and uh, the dimension would be six and the basis could be the tangential, tangential component on each edge. So why Nedlag works? The reason is because it, the space, Nedlag space could be fit in a Dirac complex. And how could we use Dirac complex to get stability result? Uh, so firstly, let me introduce a little bit about Dirac complex. This is an involved topic, actually, but uh, you can see more details in Arnold's book. This is really a good ref really good reference. I when I do my research, I always check this book for many details and many things. Yeah. So uh, this is a. Uh, Dirac complex. A complex means d d square equals to zero. This d means is exterior derivatives, and this lambda zero omega, uh, omega is n-dimensional domain or smooth manifold, and lambda zero omega means zero form differential differential zero form. On, on omega and the same things. This is one form, differential one form on omega. And this may be a little bit confused, but let me tell you the L2 Dirac complex in R3. This may be a little bit familiar for you. So here 
in R three, the Dirac complex could the L two Dirac complex could be used described as the terminology of uh of of the factor calculus. So here, the derivative d could be rep, could be described as the gradient curl and the divergence. The complex means that curl gradient equals to zero. So you have two you apply d twice and it goes to zero, which means d squared equals to zero. This means complex. And so for, for numerical analysis, we need the discrete Dirac complex. So we have their subspace v0, v1, v2, v3, and they still satisfy the condition that d squared equals to zero and the gradient of v0 is a subset of v1 and the curl of v1 is a subset of v2 and so on. And actually, so here v1, sub, the subset of h curl omega is actually the, we can, we can apply Nadlac, we can make this v1 as Nadlac space, and that will be called as a Nadlac complex usually. So, and that complex actually will become a exact complex. Exact, exact complex means that the gradient of V0, the range of V0 will be the kernel of V1, which means gradient of V0 zero equals to the kernel such that, uh, so, such that function that in V1, such that curl of V, that function will be zero. And same thing for curl and divergence makes this whole thing uh, exactly complex. Uh, this is just a definition. So I hope you will not get lost by these complex definitions. But so suppose we know that we have an exact complex, then we could construct a commuting diagram. And that commuting diagram, this commuting diagram means we apply gradient, if we go this way and the other way here, these two paths will lead to the same function. And if we have, if we have formed such commuting projections, then we could define discrete Poincaré inequality using Nadlac as an example. So suppose V1 here is the Nadlac space and we will have such discrete Poincaré inequality. This e equality make it, makes it possible for us to, to have to prove the inf super condition for mixed formulation. And then this will lead to the stability result. So, this whole thing tells us that why Nadlac -like give you a sense of why Nadlac -like space works. And back to the Lagrange finite elements, although on generic mesh, the original bilinear form, Lagrange finite element does not work, but many researchers came up that they can modify the bilinear form by adding some penalty terms. So modify, those uh, the, those variational formulations to to make the methods works makes the make makes them get stability results. However, our question would be if we do not modify the bilinear form, could we have a chance to get some convergence result on Lagrange finite elements? So the interesting result is in 1988, Wang and Sandys, they numerically show, they did some numerical experiments and they realized that on, in 2D, on Posey beam refinement mesh. So this means, so we have the original mesh, which is the red tri triangulars. And when they, and this, points would be the barycenter of this this element. And if you connect the, those two barycenters, those 
will have a split point at the edge. And we using these points, connecting those lines, these points to get a new, get a split of the original mesh. And if we do log longer finite elements on this mesh, then the eigenvalues works. They do converge to the right answer. And they did similar things in 2D, uh, in 3D uh, with consistent, consistency mesh. And we think that consistency mesh refer to the Wolsey-Farron splits. And this is the numerical experiments we did. So uh, on certain eigenvalues, we did P, uh, piecewise, uh, we use quadratic Lagrange finite elements on wolsey firing plates. And uh, the results we get is 5.001307. Uh, and the, the arrow here is significantly small, which means, and so if you refine the mesh, you will get a better res results. And the, this method numerically do looks convergent. And, but this is numerical results. We, want, we wonder, can we prove that? Can we show in theory that they do have convergent stability results? Uh, so let me give you a short summary. So we first talk about the log laundry final element on general mesh do not give you correct approximation, but the NetLag edge element works. The key point is the space can fit into a Dirac sequence. And Wang and Sandy found some numerical experiment, good numerical experiments. And in 2D on post saving, this work has already been uh, proved by my collaborators in 2021. And in 3D, that's our work. We also the goal of this talk, we give a theoretical justification in 3D for quadratic and higher Lagrange elements on Wolsey-Farron splits. Luckily, this space also fit into a Dirac sequence, which make me makes uh makes us made us feel confident that we can work it. Because remember the key point of why not like edge element work is they can fit, the space can fit into a Dirac sequence. So this is the first time to prove the convergence of Lagrange finite element for Maxwell eigenvalue problem on tetrahedral mass without modifying the model equations. Let's start to see the big picture of how we did that. A common way to prove the convergence of eigenvalue problems is to prove the uniform bonds for the corresponding source problems. In order to prove the uniform bonds, we construct two 14 type operators. To be more precise, so we first introduce the source problems. Here, A and T are solution operators such that these formulations work. And likewise, we have the discrete forms. T and TH is the key point. So this is a famous theorem, which you can also see it in the Bofi's paper. And if we have a uniform bond for T minus TH with, with omega, the parts that are related to H goes to zero when H goes to zero. H is the size of the element. And then we will have the eigenvalue of the prop of Maxwell eigenvalue problems. The eigenvalue will converge, converge. And this is what we need, right? So now we only need to prove these uniform bonds. In order to prove this uniform bond, we need to construct 14 type operators. What does this, what do these operators satisfy, the property satisfy? So firstly, we have this space. This space means the curl of V is in a discrete space. 
So which means it is uh, say piecewise polynomials, something like that with some continuity. And if that two operators satisfy these conditions, so firstly, they need to satisfy the uh, commuting, commuting properties, curl, curl and the projection work uh, apply to this tau equals to, there should be another operator, but since curl of tau already in the discrete, discrete set, so which means we do not need another projection to map into a discrete space. So this is the commuting properties that our projection need to satisfy. And they also have some bonds to bond it with some omega zero, omega zero H. And also another operators satisfy these conditions. Uh, if if that if our two per fourteen type operators that satisfy this assumption, then we will have their omega zero, omega one edge that those set uh, related to the bonds here, right? So they will actually become the bonds that bond the uniform bonds that bond T minus TH. So our main task is to construct uh, two 14 type operators. How to do that? Uh, firstly, this, uh, this is a geometry property that was if splits. So our mesh need to satisfy, which is the shape regularity of the splits. And the interesting thing is that this, this assumption, so the, this, this means that if original mesh is shape regular, then after doing Wolsey-Farron splits, the mesh is still shape regular. The interesting thing is that this results already been used in several papers, but they haven't they haven't proved prove it. They just use it as an assumption. So we proved it last year and. The, this paper already be accepted. And also you can see it on the archive for pre print. And we also need embedding theory. So note here, omega need to be contractible Lipschitz polyhedra. So that's also our condition, the condition that our methods, uh, our proof needs to satisfy. And also note here, our, this embedding requires boundary condition. This, uh, this is a uh, very important need. This condition need to satisfy. And also the very the most important part need to satisfy is the Dirac complex. This complex already be uh, came up by Guzman, Liski, and Nilan in two thousand nineteen. So here, the L space is actually the Lagrange finite the Lagrange finite elements we need, and we see that it fits into a Dirac complex. So with that exact sequence, we could construct two commuting projections, pi v and pi n. Pi v map to the L, the Lagrange finite element, uh, the Lagrange element and the pi n map to the n, which is the HD conforming the, the space we define here, n space. And the, those two operators, we proved that those two operators satisfy these commuting, pro, uh, commuting properties and satisfy such Bond. And note that this is the omega zero we have. And when h goes to zero, this whole constant will go to zero. We use a lot of techniques from this paper and also similar things for pi n. And I use pi n as an example to give you a little bit detail of how we 
construct that 14 type operators. So this is these are the degrees of freedom of N space. And we separated them into two parts. One part would be will affect the commuting properties and the other will not. And we will keep this part no change. And this part will give us some freedoms to check to do some modifications to make them satisfy the some bond to to help us to find some bonds. And we could modify this part using scorching operators because scorching operators have really good uh, bonds, really good properties. However, directly using scorching operators is not enough. Remember in the embedding theory, we mentioned that the function needs to be maintain some boundary conditions. So that's why we need to modify our scorching operators to make them pre preserve the boundary conditions to satisfy uh, to satisfy the embedding theory condition and also satisfy the the bond the beautiful bonds that scorching operator initially have. With all those properties and we and uh, the construction of the 14 type operators, we could prove the theorem that we could prove the convergence theorem. To summary, we first change the Maxwell eigenvalue problems to source problems and you and we have a convergence theory. In our to satisfy those convergence theory, we use exact sequence on what's difference blades to construct two 14 type operators. And this is the first time to theoretically justify these problems. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Thank you for the talk.